batteries charged nothing all the electronics everything works just no uh starty starty welcome back to truck central mr justin wheeler here in the 2019 ram 1500 limited high mileage edition so today i have some unfortunate news we had another failure equipment failure here in the old dusty dodge and uh, so I'll run you down on what exactly happened, how I diagnosed the problem, and then what the fix looked like. Uh, it was kind of like a ongoing lingering problem and the symptoms weren't always conclusive. So we'll talk about that in case you're having a similar issue. Before we get into the video, I do wanna say thank you to Real Truck. They are the sponsor this season for Truck Central. So after the video, head on over to realtruck.com and buy yourself something nice. All right, so let's talk about what was happening. Two weeks ago, almost exactly, I'm leaving work one evening. I go to push the start button, click, click. Thinking, okay, I thought maybe I left the lights on. Even though they're automatic, I'm not sure. I think the battery's dead, so I take my little jump pack. I put it on the battery and nothing. So that's weird, I go wiggle the cables come back inside, hit the start button, and it fires right up. I'm thinking, oh, okay, weird. I've got a dead battery and I had a weak connection on my jump pack. So I go about my business, go through the rest of that evening, stopping, starting, no problem. And then, I, uh, the very next day, so 12 days ago, I started, stopped the truck multiple times and then just out of the blue, I'm trying to leave the house and it happens again no no fire no no go no the engine didn't even try to turn over it you push the button it just goes click you push the button again it goes click i'm thinking well that's weird i mean the battery is two years old that's the most likely culprit although that that isn't the same set of symptoms that the the original battery displayed when it went bad if, if you remember the video we did a while back two years ago i guess uh when the battery went bad the truck would start it just wouldn't shift out of first gear so not going to go down that rabbit hole right now but so this was a little bit different anyway went back to the jump pack no luck thought well hell this worked yesterday why doesn't it work now so then i tried to jump it then with the explorer then back to the jump pack nothing worked i thought well the battery's just damaged it's got a bad cell maybe so i pull the battery out and i think well i better put my multimeter on it just to make sure and it read like 12.9 volts okay that's weird but it doesn't necessarily mean it's a good battery so then I put my load tester on it and it tested good I thought well I'll be so I put the battery back in the truck put the terminals back on and then the truck fired up and for the last 12 days it has ran perfectly until this morning so now I'm gonna jump to some clips that I recorded this morning as I was going through the problem and then we'll follow up with the actual repair job just abbreviated not not every step and uh, I'll see you here in a sec well it's been almost two weeks and the truck has operated perfectly and we're back batteries charged it uh, nothing all the electronics everything works just no uh, starty starty be the starter hear the fuel pump engage nothing at this point I don't know what it could really be outside of the starter so there it is small little bugger it's like a real treat to replace uh, so I'm gonna hit it with a hammer. I can. Sorry, the shadow games are intense this morning. Uh, I'm gonna hit it with a hammer. I'll try it again. Don't even know if these are the same design as the old traditional units you could pound and free that Bendix up. But we'll try it anyhow. All right, I gave it about 15 good wallops. No. Didn't wallop it good enough. 
but that's not the problem. Car quest. Thing's tiny. This is a new unit from Car Quest. The part number. That. It's like 200 bucks. It's the upgrade from the cheapest one, and they shipped it direct to the house. So that's what we're going with. All right, we are in the driveway doing things that are not a whole lot of fun in the driveway. I wanted to point out a couple things if you are to do this. Uh, you take the heat shield off. Those are 10 millimeter bolts. There is a plastic connector up there uh, that slides off that little spade terminal. Behind it is a lug 13 mil will take off. And then there are two bolts that attach the starter uh, right one right there and one behind this metal bracket those are 15 millimeter this one here is going to be a real daisy to get loose so not really looking forward to that but we'll see how it goes let me share something with you while i'm under here i look over what do i see oh yeah looks like i busted a boot on my cv shaft there is just grease everywhere exactly exactly what I wanted to see while I was down here. <sighs> All right, this lower starter bolt, she almost, uh, well, she tried to whoop me. So let me show you the combination of uh, ratchets or uh, extensions I have to get to this. We've got our 15 mil 12 point socket, a six, six inch extension into another oh no that's like an eight inch wobble head extension on a three inch extension on a swivel ratchet and that combination what in the blazes is going on here i turned my back for two seconds and this rig is just she's quitting on me all right just want to show you that top one should be a lot easier all right real quick uh, before I put the heat shield back on you can see the new starter is in the two starter bolts were kind of a pain in the butt and notice I damn near rounded them off and I was using the correct size socket uh, so just be careful uh, take your time go slow don't turn it unless you know you got a good bite because they they tried to piss me off luckily they're back in there other couple things to note the little plastic connector that holds that tab on, it's in pretty poor shape. So I put a, a little zip tie on there just to keep that tab depressed and locked on. And then the 13 mil bolt, or I'm sorry, nut that connects that lugged terminal up there that brings power to the starter. It's, uh, it's pretty tight. In fact, I, it, the, the cable is so close to the, to the connector there that I couldn't get a socket on there. I ended up using just an open end wrench and mine was extremely loose. I almost didn't need a tool. That could have been my problem all along. But anyhow, all right, I'm gonna put the heat shield back on. We're gonna push the start button. All right, guys, I'm about to hit the button. Starter's in, battery's connected. Fingers are crossed. Oh, thank God. It scared me for a second. It made me push it twice, you little bastard. Okay. It was the starter. Let me clean up and we'll, we'll do a little recap. Okay, so the starter was bad. At least we think it's bad. I mean, it, it immediately fired up once we started it, but the truck kind of had inconsistent behavior before. So I'm not 100% certain that this was the fix, but I will tell you this. When I was doing a little bit of research this morning as I was sitting in this truck not with it not running, I read that a few folks have had starter issues and it always starts off seeming, feeling like a battery issue. What will happen is uh, there's something wrong with the with the starter. It's either drawing too much current or there's a bad connection or or whatever and it it makes people think it's the 
battery and then when you put a brand new fresh battery in that little extra kick of fresh battery juice kind of forces that starter to just eke out a little bit more life it made me think that because I knew my battery passed a load test and a voltage test that there was something else going on and it kind of you know the jump pack working intermittently kind of corroborates that it was kind of giving it a little fresh burst of juice I don't know I'm not sure how those things work but new starter seems to be working I'm not the only one who has had to replace a starter in these already there's a couple folks on the internet who have had to have this done and uh, I mean 213,000 miles is a lot it's not uncommon to have to replace a starter in that amount of time but I will say it doesn't have the same amount of cycles as a 213,000 mile truck because a lot of my trips are two three four hundred miles minimum at a time so it's not like I'm going five miles to and back to and fro you know to work which would require a significant amount of starter cycles all we can do is wait and see but I'm feeling pretty optimistic so if you have any clues as to what might have been going on, if you if you have a strong inclination that it's not the starter and that it might have been something else, please leave that comment down below. Uh, as you saw, I've got some other things to look at. My CV boot sprung a leak, so that's going to have to be fixed very, very soon. Can't put that off, and uh, I don't know. I guess maybe I shouldn't have gone with the aftermarket replacement. Probably should have went OEM. Tried to save a couple dollars. That's what happens sometimes. Anyhow, before we get out of here, I do want to give one final thank you to Real Truck. Intakes, exhaust, wheels, tires, bed covers, you name it, they got it. Leave me a comment down below. You know I look forward to talking to you. And as always, thanks for watching.